Last step in the restoration process. Slip the handle on and put the saw nuts on. Just have to line up the holes. Now the nuts go through from the side with a medallion on it because the medallion is... The bolts go through the side with a medallion on it because the medallion is a bolt in its of itself. I like to have the bolts all lined up. Or as Chris Swartz calls it, clocked. Now the bolts don't so matter so much because there's no there's no slot in the head of the bolt. But the medallion has an upside has a right side up and an upside down. The bolts have these flats on them that line up with the square holes in the surface of the saw handle. This one is the one that we cut for the oversized hole on the top. Line those all up. Get my glove out of there. And there they go. Looking pretty good. Oops, medallion fell out. Easy enough fix. Back around straight. I'll hold my finger on it this time until I get it down flat. There we go. I'll put a knot on that one since it's the one that seems to be a little bit loose. Now the clocking comes in when you're putting the screw slots in. I like to have them all face parallel with the edge of the blade. You don't want to over tighten the bolts. You can break them. These are steel. They'll take a little more abuse. But even so, we don't want to break them. This one goes on this screw. Classic saws have brass screws. Brass is amazingly strong, but you can snap those puppies off without even thinking about it. There. It was used in railroad cars. And the caboose for where the people worked on the train working on the train could repair their tools and sharpen their tools up with it. Keystone Railroad Tool Grinder. Good piece of equipment. I think that's why it survived all these years when a lot of other grinders are pretty sad shape.
We'll see if that's enough. Needs to go just a little bit more. Grinder away. Back under the bench where it's out of the way. Back under the bench where it's out of the way. Sweep off the dust. Tape off the saw. One final step. My favorite finish. Butcher's Boston Polish, Amber Paste Wax. My mom used this when she was refinishing furniture. And I inherited it, and I can see why she liked it. It smells great, works perfectly, goes on easy. It's a paste wax, so it doesn't take a lot of rubbing. really, really protects the finish. Doesn't have a high gloss, doesn't make it look like it's been varnished. Like you picked it up out of an antique store that somebody spray canned it.
use it on my hand tools, and I even use it on the bed of my table saw and my planer. It does a real good job of preventing oxidation. Paper towels are nice for around the teeth. They don't damage the teeth. And if I cut them full of ribbons, I don't care. Nothing quite like a toothbrush for getting the little nooks and crannies cleaned out. Proofs in the pudding. Thank you. 
Nice straight cut. Smooth and easy. From a saw that started out looking like this one. Missing screws and all. To this fine piece of work. I'd be happy to use this for another 20 years if I live that long. Or I can pass it on to my family. Or one of you lucky fellas. We'll just have to see what the future brings. This brings to a close this episode of Old Snail Ox Workshop. Thanks for watching. As I promised, I sharpened a crosscut saw and show you how it's done. The next one we're going to tackle is called a one man crosscut. This is a big, mean saw, but it's a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Remember, subscribe up in this corner and say you like it down here. There'll be new videos each week. Thanks again.